Imagine a land untouched by human hands, a sprawling continent of endless red plains, dense eucalyptus forests, and rivers glinting beneath the harsh, unyielding sun. Here, the air vibrated with the roar of life, thick with the scent of wet earth after rare rains, and alive with the shadows of creatures so enormous, so alien, they would defy belief today. This was prehistoric Australia, a realm of giants, monsters, and adaptations sculpted by isolation and the relentless forces of survival. Here, wombats the size of elephants plodded through marshes, their massive feet leaving impressions deeper than a man could stride. Towering flightless birds thundered across open plains, while massive reptiles, longer than trucks, slithered silently, their presence enough to strike fear into even the largest herbivores. Every day was a contest of life and death, where the slightest mistake could mean extinction. This is not a story of myth or exaggeration. Every creature, every predator, every adaptation existed in the intricate, interwoven theater of life. Through the lens of science, we can reconstruct these lost worlds, feel their pulse, and witness the extraordinary extremes evolution produced in isolation. Step into a time when Australia was not a continent of small marsupials, but a land ruled by nightmares beyond imagination. Long before humans walked the Red Earth, the landmass we now call Australia was drifting slowly apart from its Gondwanan siblings, a solitary expanse adrift in the Southern Hemisphere. The continent's isolation forged a crucible of evolution unlike anywhere else on Earth. Rainforests once cloaked much of the landscape, giving way to open plains and scrublands as climates shifted and seasonal floods carved rivers and wetlands that teemed with life. In this ancient world, the rules of survival were both familiar and strange. Marsupials, dominating where placental mammals ruled elsewhere, explored niches that elsewhere would have been occupied by entirely different families of creatures. Some evolved into towering browsers, grazing the treetops, while others became swift predators, masters of stealth and cunning. Isolation allowed oddities to flourish. Flightless birds of unprecedented size, reptiles far exceeding the proportions of their cousins elsewhere, and creatures whose existence would seem impossible if not for fossil evidence etched into limestone and sandstone. The stage was set for megafauna to rise, but not merely in bulk. These were beings forged for endurance, for survival in an unforgiving environment of fluctuating climates, fires, and periodic droughts. Every adaptation mattered. Limbs had to support immense weight. Jaws had to process tough vegetation. Senses had to detect threats in forests where a single wrong step could be fatal. Australia's ancient landscape was more than a backdrop. It was an active participant in evolution. Seasonal cycles, predator-prey dynamics, and environmental pressures created a world where only the fittest survived. It was a place where isolation nurtured creativity and life itself, setting the scene for giants to dominate, predators to innovate, and the drama of survival to unfold at a scale no modern imagination can easily grasp. Among the towering eucalypts and sun-baked plains roamed creatures so vast, they redefined what it meant to be large. At the forefront was Diprotodon, the largest marsupial ever known. Standing up to two meters at the shoulder and stretching over three meters from nose to tail, weighing nearly three tons, Diprotodon moved like a living fortress. Imagine an elephant, but with the distinctive broad snout of a wombat, grazing calmly on shrubs and leaves, yet aware of every predator lurking in shadowed groves. Diprotodon's immense size was both a weapon and a vulnerability. While few could confront it head-on, its lumbering gait made it slower to react to sudden threats, and its dependence on water sources left it exposed during dry spells. These giants were browsers, often traveling vast distances in search of moisture-rich vegetation, 
shaping the landscape simply by their presence. Forests bore the scars of their feeding, and riverside plains were churned by their massive feet. Meanwhile, Procoptodon, the giant short-faced kangaroo, moved with astonishing grace. Two meters tall and over 200 kilograms, this marsupial was a leaf browser rather than a hopper of the modern kind. Its long forelimbs and grasping hands allowed it to reach foliage beyond the reach of other herbivores. In some ways, it resembled a modern giraffe in function, yet built for the rough terrain of Australian scrubland. Predators waited in the shadows. The largest herbivores had evolved not merely for size, but for survival strategies. Social behavior, vigilance, and seasonal migration all played roles in evading danger. One misstep, a grazing diprotodon turning too slowly, a percoptodon straying from its group, could invite disaster. Yet the sheer scale of these titans also inspired awe. Their dominance over the land was a testament to evolution's ability to build both grandeur and resilience in equal measure. The story of these giants was not static. As climates fluctuated, they had to adapt to new vegetation patterns, shifting rivers, and seasonal droughts. Each day was a gamble, a test of endurance against the forces of nature, against predators both cunning and colossal. And in every footfall, every rustle of leaves, the drama of survival played out in a world as beautiful as it was brutal. Where giants roamed, predators waited. Among them, Thylacolio, the marsupial lion, reigned supreme. Evolving from herbivorous ancestors, it had developed retractable claws and massive, shearing premolars capable of slicing through flesh and bone. While comparable to a modern lion in weight, its bite force relative to size was extraordinary, more than capable of dispatching prey far larger than itself. Every stalk, every leap, was calculated a lethal ballet of patience and power. The skies and land were also home to Megalania, a colossal monitor lizard stretching up to seven meters. A predator built for ambush, it could slither silently across open ground, muscles coiled like springs, before striking with terrifying precision. For a procoptodon or a young diprotodon, Megalania represented an ever-present nightmare a predator that could appear without warning, vanish just as silently, leaving only devastation in its wake. On riverside plains prowled Quincana, a terrestrial crocodile up to six meters long. Its long legs allowed it to chase prey across land, while blade-like teeth ensured that few herbivores could escape once within reach. Unlike modern crocodiles, Quincana was an apex predator in a dry landscape, a creature whose hunting strategy combined stealth, endurance, and explosive speed. Predator and prey danced an endless game of life and death. Diprotodon would graze, ears twitching, nostrils flaring, constantly aware of shadows. Procoptodon moved in cautious groups, each member scanning for danger. Even the smallest miscalculation could lead to tragedy. Yet predators were equally vulnerable. A thylacolio misjudging its leap could be crushed beneath the hooves of a diprotodon, and a megalania caught on open plains could become trapped in muddy riverbeds. This world was one of extremes. Modern comparisons, like lions hunting buffalo on the African savanna, capture only a fraction of the terror and scale. In prehistoric Australia, prey was massive, predators were extraordinary, and the consequences of every encounter could ripple across ecosystems. Evolution honed every strategy, every adaptation, crafting beings that were both fearsome and awe-inspiring in their complexity and efficiency. Not all giants were mammals. Flightless birds, reptiles, and other oddities shaped the ecological web. Among them stood Dromornis, the demon duck of doom, reaching three meters tall and weighing over 300 kilograms. Its massive, curved beak and long neck gave it an almost dinosaurian appearance. While initially thought to be a herbivore, 
Some evidence suggests it may have scavenged or even preyed on smaller animals, adding a layer of unpredictability to its presence. Then there were the armored Myelania, giant horned turtles up to 2.5 meters long, with club tails capable of delivering powerful blows. These ancient reptiles survived in pockets long after other megafauna had vanished, a living testament to resilience and evolutionary creativity. Australia's isolation nurtured bizarre forms of life. Birds evolved into enormous, ostrich-like giants. Reptiles grew beyond modern scales. Marsupials diversified into forms that seemed to rewrite rules seen elsewhere on Earth. Modern analogs, such as cassowaries or goannas, offer hints of these lost forms, yet pale in comparison to the scale and extremity of their ancestors. Ecosystems thrived through intricate balances. Giant herbivores reshaped vegetation. Predators maintained population control, and birds and reptiles filled niches that mammals might occupy elsewhere. Evolution was both artist and engineer, crafting bodies, behaviors, and strategies that allowed survival in a land where danger lurked in every shadow. It was a world both alien and familiar, where every step, every rustle of leaves, carried suspense. The air itself seemed heavy with anticipation, a constant reminder that life in prehistoric Australia demanded vigilance, ingenuity, and extraordinary adaptation. The world of giants was not eternal. Towards the late Pleistocene, Australia's climate began to shift. Wetlands shrank, inland lakes dried, and seasonal floods became unpredictable. Once reliable sources of food and water vanished, forcing giants to roam greater distances, often exposing them to predators and environmental hazards. Into this fragile balance came humans. Early Aboriginal Australians arrived roughly 50,000 years ago, bringing fire, hunting techniques, and landscape-altering practices. While the precise impact of humans on megafauna remains debated, the timing of their arrival aligns closely with the disappearance of many giant species. Fires would have reshaped forests into grasslands, altered water availability, and disrupted the ecological web upon which these giants depended. Climate change and human activity together created an evolutionary bottleneck. Diprotodon, Procoptodon, and Dromornis faced shrinking habitats, dwindling genetic diversity and novel pressures they had never encountered. Even creatures that had survived for millions of years could not withstand the compounded stress. The extinction of these titans reshaped Australia's ecosystems. Where once colossal herbivores had sculpted vegetation, smaller, more specialized animals rose. Marsupials remained dominant, yet the extraordinary scale of the Pleistocene world faded. Modern wombats kangaroos, and cassowaries offer glimpses of these ancestors, reminders of a world in which survival was a daily, monumental struggle. Through these extinctions, nature reminded us of its impartiality. No size, strength, or evolutionary ingenuity guarantees permanence. Survival is a fragile achievement, written in bones, fossils, and the shifting sands of time. Today, Australia's red plains and eucalyptus forests are quieter, yet the echoes of the past remain. Fossils in places like Riverslay tell stories of creatures so vast, so powerful, that the imagination struggles to contain them. Bones of Diprotodon, Thylacolio, and giant birds lie preserved in stone, offering a tangible connection to a world otherwise lost to time. Modern species carry fragments of these ancient traits. The wombat's burrowing habits, the cassowary's formidable legs and claws, the goanna's stealth and opportunism, all are echoes of ancestors who faced threats unimaginable today. By studying them, scientists gain insight into evolution's creativity, resilience, and vulnerability. The disappearance of Australia's giants serves as a cautionary tale. It highlights the interplay of climate, isolation, and human impact, reminding us that even the most seemingly invincible creatures can vanish when conditions change too rapidly.
Yet it also inspires wonder. Evolution produced forms so extraordinary, they challenge our understanding of life's possibilities. In every fossil, in every preserved footprint, the land whispers its history. It tells of survival, adaptation, and the intricate dance of life and death. It challenges us to respect the ecosystems we inherit and reminds us that our stewardship shapes which species will endure. Prehistoric Australia may be gone, but its legacy teaches, humbles, and awes in equal measure. Prehistoric Australia was not merely a stage for monsters. It was a crucible in which evolution tested extremes. Gigantic marsupials, terrifying predators, and strange birds were not anomalies. They were triumphs of adaptation, survival, and the relentless push of life against the boundaries of possibility. Their existence was a testament to nature's creativity and its impartial cruelty. In observing these lost worlds, we confront the same forces that shape our planet today. Climate change, competition, predation, and the fragility of ecosystems. Survival is never guaranteed, no matter the size or strength of a creature. Every footstep of a diprotodon, every hunting leap of a thylacolio, every cautious glide of a giant bird was a gamble against extinction, a reminder that life is both wondrous and merciless. Today, Australia's landscape is quieter, yet the echoes of those giants remain in stone, in fossils, and in the traits of modern species. They urge us to reflect on our place in the natural order, on the responsibility we bear as stewards of life, and on the beauty and brutality of evolution itself. The nightmares of prehistoric Australia are gone, but the lessons they leave resonate profoundly. In the sweep of time, in the power of adaptation, and in the awe-inspiring drama of survival that unfolds wherever life dares to exist. What would it have been like to walk among giants the size of elephants or face predators longer than a truck? Which prehistoric creature from Australia fascinates you the most and why? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We want to hear your ideas, theories, and what-if scenarios. And if this journey into the lost world of Australia ignited your sense of wonder, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us for more incredible stories from the dawn of life, the rise of giants, and the mysteries of our planet's past. Every subscription helps us uncover more wonders and bring these prehistoric worlds to life for you.